Yo, what's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the When in Soul podcast. Danny Cho here with Bobby Choi. We're in the studio today. Boom, boom, boom. Whoa. Um, I know for the last couple of episodes, uh, it was just me and Bobby, and I'm sure some of you are sick of our sexy voices. So today we decided to bring up another guest to add to the sexy voice um, trio. That we are, duo that we are. Sean Yoon is in the house. Hey, Sean, what's yeah. up, buddy? Our hey, good, fellas, good our, to be here. Our uh, good friend Sean, another Sh- Kyopo living in Seoul. Yeah, I mean, both of you are like my not only my uh, life youngs. You guys are my <laughs> sambes in living in Korea. We're your gurus. My gurus. Well, uh, Sean was my guru when I first moved here. Oh, uh, so Sean, you've been here how long? I've been here for fifteen years now. Wow. Yeah. So. That's the age of a freshman in high school. <laughs> I don't know. Is it? That's yeah. That's a good it, way to yeah. put it. Um, so the reason why we uh, decided to bring Sean on as a guest is not not just because he's a good friend of ours, but also because a few episodes back we talked about uh, Sky Castle and the kind of craziness of the education, not just the system, but how. Korean parents are super crazy and obsessed about uh, getting their kids into, you know, prominent colleges and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we brought on Sean because he is an educator and he has seen and experienced uh, a lot of this so-called craziness. Yeah, we thought of Sean as soon as we had that conversation. Yeah, I was like, oh, we should have yeah. had Sean on this episode. So uh, we brought on Sean. Um, so Sean, uh What's up, buddy? Thank you for being a part of our show. Oh, no. Thank you for having me today. And uh, I don't know. I hope <laughs> I can bring some insight into <laughs> we wouldn't these have questions. You, we wouldn't have you here if we didn't think you'd be, like, um, interesting to have on. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but there's a lot of pressure. You know, our listeners need you to be very informative and you know, delightful and <laughs> that's, that's a great introduction to the last, <laughs> my first and last appearance on your podcast. But uh, before we get into uh, the talk, uh, the educational talks, um, Danny and I wanted to talk about some stuff that's going on in the news. We're we're trying out this new format for our show, where we just talk about current events happening in Seoul in Korea. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we, we want we want to invite you to be part of the conversation as well. So feel free to just yeah, man. What's uh, give your what's going on? Oh, well, the first news topic that we found was a Korean YouTuber. Uh, he went to uh, an abandoned convalescent home, and kind of to kind of uh, like a haunted house type of feel, you know. But it wasn't like set up like a haunted house. It was just an abandoned convalescent home, you know, late at night. And um, as he's uh, walking through and, you know, trying to be like, oh, this is scary, uh, he ran into an actual dead body in an abandoned convalescent home. Whoa. And it wasn't like fully, what do you call it? Um, uh, it fully, what's the word? Not decapitated. What do you call it? Uh, decomposed? It wasn't fully decomposed. That's why you're here, Sean, to, to help <laughs> me with my English. Um, it wasn't fully dis- uh, decomposed because of the fact that uh, possibly because it is cold outside, so it kind of uh, kept some of the uh, body. Uh, it's winter. Yeah, it would have been a way cooler story if it was only partially decapitated. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, <laughs> decapitated was the word I was thinking about. And so, uh, it's possibly a homeless man. Yes. that was squatting in a in this in this uh, facility. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, you know what? Like, are first of all, are you guys into like haunted houses? I'm not. Yeah, I'm. I'm afraid of anything haunted. I'm. I believe in ghosts and spirits and haunted houses. Mm. Like I, I, uh, I don't even watch horror films or, at all. And I don't even like the like movies like Old Boy. Uh, I, you I, like I, Old Boy? I, I haven't seen it because really? I heard it's like a thriller kind of shocker kind of film. So I just like I just put it off on my. Do not watch list. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I I like thrillers a lot. I I'm a little ambivalent toward um like supernatural horror movies cuz uh-huh. I I think I was 12 years old when I watched um The Exorcist for the first time Ooh, and I watched yeah. it I watched it on a dare by my cousin cuz she was like 
this is the scariest movie. You like, I don't think you can finish it. And I was like, I can finish this movie. And I, <laughs> and I instantly regretted it yeah. after I watched it. I uh, had two older brothers and they made me watch stuff like those, like horror films, like the exorcist. And, uh, that's why I hate it to this day. I can't, I can't watch it. I can't sit through them. Even the thought of it. I think the last thing I saw was like Blair Witch Project. Uh, and that to this day, even just thinking about it now, gives me the chills. But that just ma- that that movie just made me sick because it was all handheld. You know what I mean? And like it made me like it got me. Yeah, it was hard. To, it was hard to sit through a lot of like the, motion yeah. sickness, man. Um, well, this this uh, article about this Korean YouTuber, mm-hmm. I didn't even really realize there were Korean YouTubers. Oh, dude, there's Is that like a thing. There's so many. Like, just think about the mukbangs, dude. Yeah. Oh, that oh, that that counts. Yeah. Right. Is that yeah. all on YouTube? The mukbangs and stuff. So many on YouTube. Yeah. Um, okay. And you know other other platforms like Twitch and uh, you know. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. I there's, see those there's so many like people walking beyond around, that. Yeah. Walking around with their phones and they have all this like the mic set up, but mm-hmm. they're alone. Yeah. They're, and they're, they're walking around Hongdae going, yeah. nah, boon, and we're here at the, you know, whatever, and the coin, Norebang. Um, but the thing is, uh, I realized, given that, like, I've I've met a lot of comedians that are somewhat well-known, they've been on TV and stuff, uh-huh. and a lot of them have their own YouTube channels. And I was like, dude, you guys are famous. What are you doing YouTube for? And so it, it turns out that a lot of these celebrities – want to get onto YouTube to to make more money. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these YouTube celebrities want to get on TV to become more famous, you know? And so, mm-hmm. like, uh, all these, uh, f- like, we're talking about people that are on TV almost every day that have their own, like, YouTube channels of doing random stuff, you know? That makes sense to me. Like, yeah. there's that one kid that, like, is, like, seven or eight-year-old kid who all he does is just opens toys Oh, yeah. And he makes, like, what, millions of dollars a year? Yeah. Unboxing videos, I don't understand why they're so good. I mean, like, not that they're good, but why they're so popular. But they're so, like, unboxing videos. There's reaction videos. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, there's plenty of MCNs in, in Korea now. Okay. Actually, one of them, uh, they have, like, their own channel on TV. And it's usually all mukbang related. But there's a D D I A D they they they're like an M C N but then they put that on on T V now. So yeah, this YouTube uh is is a big platform here for people to make money and I believe that in in the States that market is kind of dying down. You know, a lot of the earlier YouTube stars are kind of not really going as all in as they used to. But here in Korea, I mean, it's everywhere you see. It's growing. Yeah, people trying to be YouTube stars, you know. Okay. Uh, so. What else is going on? The other thing is uh, the gender ministry reacts to controversial guidelines. Uh, the, minis- the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family, uh, basically, they, were, they, they said that they were called out for stating that local television stations should refrain from featuring people whose appearances are exceedingly similar to each other. Uh, the guidelines went on to say <laughs> that most of the stars featured in music programs from idol groups whose musical stylings are just as limited as their appearances are. Uh, most of the idol groups have similar skinny bodies, white skin, hairstyles, makeup, and costumes that expose a lot of skin. The uniformity can be seen in both female and male stars. So... The this group was saying, "Yo, you can't, you know, we, we, there needs to be some diversity, right?" But uh, because of a lot of backlash, they've decided to do away with this ruling. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I read about this on uh, CNN actually. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, what do, what do you think about this? I I, I have like, uh, I kind of feel because I've been told myself uh-huh. that if I um. If I got a nose job, uh-huh. I would do much better in Korea. Really? Yeah. If I uh, remember one time I went to, uh, I met I met up with some friends and they they brought out their friends and their friends happened to be like plastic surgeons. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they paid me a, one guy. You know, after a few drinks, he was just like, "Hey, Bobby, you're actually you're a good looking guy. Uh-huh. You just need a nose job." <laughs> Like to me. Well, they were drinking, so that means they're telling the truth. 
<laughs> I'm looking at you now. I'm yeah, well, to... I'm looking at Bobby's nose, and I was like, like, really? Well, it's crooked. Just the know? nose? So he, w- he was telling his colleagues, too. Uh-huh. He's like, hey, look at Bobby. Isn't he a... He's a good-looking guy. He just has to fix his nose. Yeah. And so I was, like, curious. Like, I live with my nose all my life, you know? <laughs> yeah, and no so, crap. <laughs> but your and, nose looks smaller now than it did, like, in high school. Really? Well, I'm, I'm an older man. I'm growing into... Your face? Uh, my face, <laughs> <Right>. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or your nose so, is growing into your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they said, um, really think about it because your career could... Um, you know, benefit from you getting a nose job, especially in Korea. This is when I first moved to Korea. And I, and I, I, I thought about it for a little bit, but then I realized if, I felt like I'd be selling out in some way. Mm. Like I felt like that was the line, there was a line yeah. uh, that I wouldn't cross and ha- that ha- line happened to be a nose job. But um, yeah, I, I live this to this day with a crooked nose, so I'm hoping I make it. Would you get like Botox? So, other people, other kids, and younger generation, the younger generation can s- see. Hey, Bobby has a crooked nose. Uh, if he can make it, then maybe I can make it. But maybe <laughs> that's why I haven't made it because I haven't gotten. The You're nose trying job. to be the hero for like <laughs> semi good looking people. Full. That's what this article reminds me of. <laughs> no, for, I don't know. Maybe it's I'm I'm for making it very personal. I mean, for me, dude. Yeah. Like I see. Like I can't tell. Uh, I'm not into Korean like boy band girl group uh, music anyway, but there's so many of them and they all kind of look the same to me. Uh, And so I feel like there needs to be a little bit of uh, diversification or, you know, in terms of looks, because I feel like especially with plastic surgery here, uh, it's almost like you have a choice of like five eyes five noses and five like mouths you know what i mean it's kind of like instead of they're not artists anymore it's like going to mcdonald's and you only have a, you can't make your own burger at mcdonald's that right? reminds so. me of north korea uh-huh. uh barber shops uh-huh. i hear there's only like a certain amount of hairstyles you're allowed to choose from i don't know if i'm going into <laughs> <laughs> wait so like what what would they be proposing like how would you police something like that uh be like um maybe maybe i don't know i mean i i don't know how they would police anything really but uh to be like hey uh can you all stand next to each other and be like yeah y'all don't you look too similar and then Mm -hmm. like if there if there was a quota who gets through the quota and who gets like well it's korea so so it's korea so it has to be seniority Right? Oh. There there has to be a hierarchy. There's right? probably a lot of like problems with this. <laughs> with, with, that word. <laughs> Dude, I remember like the gender like that that group, they they've done some like weird um I think they criticized Pororo. Uh-huh. Cuz uh like early on, remember when Pororo didn't have pants uh-huh. or didn't wear clothes, he just wore like a helmet and goggles. Uh-huh. Okay. And then that gender ministry was like, mm-mm. Like <laughs> this, this penguin, this penguin needs pants. <laughs> Where, what's that from? I, that reminds me of someone making a, a you know, Donald Duck. Uh-huh. He doesn't have pants, yeah. right? He just has a blue shirt on. Uh-huh. But whenever he takes a shower in in cartoons, uh-huh. he always comes out with a towel around his waist. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? The there was it, a few years ago. Uh, I saw it on Reddit. Where um, it was the Miss Tegu contest, uh, and the winner goes to become like the Tegu representative for Miss Korea, and basically it was all the contestants in a GIF, and basically it looked like the same girl with just different hairstyles and clothes. <laughs> have you have you seen that? Where where it, it's it's the same. I mean, they're different girls, but it looks like the same girl. Because, I haven't, but I can easily. Yeah. I can easily mm-hmm. picture something like that. So I'm kind of for diversity, you know what I mean? So I can tell who's who, you know? Uh, and, and maybe maybe it's because I'm still I'm, I'm American, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know how white people can tell Asians apart? Well, I can't really tell uh, that many Koreans apart. I think we just need more satire to make, like, make fun of it. And, like, so, like, these people will be like, you know what, maybe I'm just embarrassing myself by... Uh, making myself into a clone of all these pop stars. I mean, I, I mean, like, okay, if you had to live with somebody else's face 
for a day? Would you like change? Would you John Woo face off yourself to be like, I want to be this person? Wait, are you asking me if I would, would I behave differently if I had someone else's face? Yeah. Hell yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Like, would, okay, would you, is there a sp- specific person's face you would like to have face off for like a day? Oh, I don't know. Cause I anyone any good looking dude I'm I'm all for it like I like I would change my face to Daniel Henney's face for like one day because that dude is uh he has he's on a, in a McDonald's commercial right now yeah and he only has says four lines in Korean in Cor- well, no and only one word in Korean so it starts off with him going sujebogo okay. Right, and then other people are like Namja Kitty, you know, like pizza <laughs> tende, right? And then he goes, "Don't worry." And then it's like a shot of like them making the burger, and then he goes, "Come on," <laughs> right? And then voiceover, he goes, "McDonald's signature burger." You know how but much he got paid? He got paid half a million dollars for that. What's McDonald's? Yeah. No, but I, I understand that. But I He's was a like, good-looking guy, you know. That's Talented. my point. I want half a million dollars. I know that dude don't even eat McDonald's, right? So like, <laughs> like, so like, I want to have that dude's face, so I can be like, hey, I want to feel that. It's like having a, it's like driving like a supercar, having that kind of face, you know? Do yeah. they really need a really? Do they really need to uh, spend that kind of money? No, on an actor. To get people to buy their burgers? Absolutely That's not. That's the question. Absol- I, I, <laughs> like, I, I, I totally don't think it's necessary. Well, no, I, I think Daniel Henney's a great guy. He's a, you know, a, no hating on him. Yeah, I'm man, make, that the, make the money, is, bro. You know? Yeah. I mean, I can, matter of fact, I can do the same thing and I don't need half a million dollars. I'd be like, oh, give me just 10 grand, right? And then I can, <laughs> yeah. just, I can, I can do sujebogo, okay? And you actually Namja eat kiri, there. Right. <laughs> you're right. actually a customer. <laughs> right. If, like, if you're going to eat McDonald's, it doesn't matter who's the, the face of, of McDonald's, right? You're going to eat there, right? So. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just so good. Do you hear about this in the news? There's this, um, it's a big controversy with the crackdown. On clubs, yes. So, uh, uh, there's. I'll read a little bit about this. There's a. It's club burning sun, bro. Yeah. Okay. You read about it. Uh, police are widening a crackdown on drugs and distribution at clubs located in Gangnam, southern Seoul, according to announcement on Sunday. The crackdown comes amid heightened public anger over unlawful assault at a club, Burning Sun. Owned by K-pop star Seungri, which has sparked suspicions of sexual violence against female customers after dragging, drugging them with GHB, known as the date rape drug, on top of a short Ooh. sex video that was allegedly filmed at the club. Who's this uh, K-pop star? Seungri. Seungri is uh, a member of Big Bang. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a big. It's a big yeah, and then uh, <laughs> it's a big, it's a Big Bang, and yeah. so apparently. Uh, the the investigations happen because of uh, some customer getting uh, his butt whooped there, and uh, and so I guess it, it was like, all right, dude, I did nothing wrong, and that dude went, hey, you got to investigate this this club, and just a whole bunch of it opened up Pandora's box. So yeah. this this customer got beat up, yes, by like security. There or? Security, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then so following reports that uh, suspect a Chinese promoter for Burning Sun known as Anna, uh, she was selling drugs to VIP customers. Police questioned the suspect for about 14 hours over the weekend. The suspect denied allegations of drug use and distribution, according to police. I, I, I actually haven't heard about this. Have you heard about this? It's, apparently it's a really big news story. Yeah, but yeah. you know me, I live in my little um, dungeon. I mean, uh, that like you know, date rape drug. It's it, like it's kind of it's kind of hardcore. You know what? I I had read something on Reddit. This is actually before this Burning Sun thing mm-hmm. blew up, and uh, some some girls who've been clubbing in uh, Hongdae, mm-hmm. they had been reporting that. Uh, Someone had been slipping like something into their drinks, mm-hmm. right? 
But it wasn't like it wasn't like roofies or something, right? Mm-mm. It was something that made them completely just black out mm. and not remember anything. Yikes! And uh, this this one redditor, she was fortunate enough; like she felt a little weird, so she was like, "Hey, some something's wrong. Like, take me home right now." Yeah. And she got home. Nothing happened to her. Mm-hmm. But then when she woke up, she was like, "I don't know." I don't know how I got here. I don't yes. even know where I was last night. Mm. That's that's scary. I mean, the thing about this uh, this story though that uh, it doesn't, I can't relate to, is because uh, Bobby and I are not allowed in clubs anymore because we're too <laughs> old. Right? Neither so, is Sean. Sean and I were actually the same age. <laughs> Oh so, um, yeah, no. So like, I don't. I mean, I've I've actually been to Burning Sun, like uh, like l- maybe like. A, I've never even heard of it. Yeah, I haven't heard yeah. of it. Is is it a new club? It's. I think it's a newer club. Okay. Uh, but I got in because I was with random celebrities. If you have celebrities, then you can get like sixty year olds into the club. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. I was like, oh, thank God. But um, this dude, I don't know, man. Like. Uh, the YG Big Bang's part of YG, uh, yeah. uh, underneath the YG uh, company, and all, a lot of Big Bang members have, all of them actually, except Taeyang, has had a scandal, um, and three of them were drug related, like uh, like G Dragon uh, got busted with weed. I remember that. And then, uh, top. yeah, he yeah Top got busted with the uh, weed. And now Sunni, well, he's he's not busted for for drugs, but his establishment is being busted for for drugs. So uh, it's kind of funny because on the Netflix special, there's a comedian named Yu Byungje. Well, there's only one Korean comic with the special, and he's part of YG too. And so he addressed how how all the people were complaining. How come you don't make fun of your own company? You make fun of everything else, like like politics and whatnot. Oh, really? And then <laughs> so Pyongyang goes, "All right, fine. YG's a pharmacy, <laughs> right? Right? Like 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 meaning like everybody's getting busted for drugs there." And I heard that internally, uh, the company was not happy, and they were pleading with him to kind of uh, retract, not retract, like edit it out of the special. Oh, but okay. but Pyongyang was like, "No, nah, I think it's funnier this way," and so reluctantly they kept it in. So big shout out to Pyongja for for you yeah, know, putting the foot him. putting the foot down. Right? It's very David Letter- Letterman of him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like David Letterman always <laughs> he always like talks crap about CBS. Yeah. But it's all in good fun. He's still that's his network. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it's you're not you can't do comedy without making fun of your bosses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? It's it's all about it's all in good fun. So. Well, the thing about <laughs> Singli, why he's getting in heat for it, he's part of the ownership group, but uh he basically distanced distanced himself from the from the alleged misconduct at Burning Sun on grounds that he did not directly manage operations at the club, and basically he was more promoting like his Asia tour, okay, you know, as opposed to being like you know taking care of stuff because he's not again he's not the sole owner, you know, mm-hmm. and so people were like, oh, you shouldn't promote your Asia tour. You should go handle this stuff, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I mean... He's the most high-profile high owner. Right. Yeah. It's sad that there's um, things like this happening now in mm-hmm. Korea. I don't know if it's if, if it's a new thing or not, but uh, hopefully they crack down on it. That's like... Um, it's stuff we've heard about growing up in the States. Yeah, man. Uh, the, like getting something slipped into to your drink. Mm-hmm. That's not new news in back home i yeah but, but here it's sad to to know that thing is that kind of thing is but, existing but you know what i i am i've been to clubs where i look at people and i'm like they have to be on something right like they're not they're not it's not just alcohol related you know you oh, could really? look you could look in somebody's in eyes korea? yeah and I, oh, yeah I, i've never the thing is when i first moved to korea and i started going clubbing a lot mm-hmm that's the one thing I was really proud of, mm-hmm. you know, living in Korea and knowing that I could tell that people weren't on, like, the majority, of, like, the everyone yeah. was just, like, drinking. That's it. Like, like there was no drugs involved. And yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that energy. Um, but I haven't been to a club in 
Years, probably. I've been to a few so, where I was like, nah, that's not – alcohol don't do that to people. Oh, you know what I mean? Shame. And so I'm like, yikes. Uh, I need to get out of here because uh, I don't want to be caught in this mess. You know what I mean? So uh, – Let's uh let's move on. This is like depressing me. Yeah, let's yeah. let's 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 get into <laughs> education. <laughs> education. That's why know, we have we Sean, Sean here. here. Um, oh, so, we have to talk about this. Yes, we actually we found there was an article uh, on on Korea Times that uh, you know it it showed an example of college entry exam the Sunum. questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And uh, Danny and I answered this. There was five questions that they gave, for example. And Danny and I, we both took it separately. And we were both confident. And I, I'll speak for myself. I, I thought I got all of them right. Like, I confidently, like, said, oh, this is easy. This is, uh, the answer is three or the answer is four. And uh, I got only three out of five right. And I felt, I felt like, oh, maybe I should go back to school. But then I, I remember this is... These are high school kids having to take this exam, and I'm here. I am like a 42 year old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I I had the same confidence, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, according to this uh, article, it says that um, the it's notoriously notoriously difficult, so much so that many native English speakers uh, have called it a crazy test. And so I was like, how crazy can it be? Oh, it's a crazy test. Like I don't have much experience with the sunan because I don't. I don't do any preparation for it. I don't help kids with it. Uh -huh. uh, most of the students I deal with are all international school students or boarding school students, mm -hmm. maybe like Wego students. Uh -huh. But like Suning is Suning is brutal. Um, if only because it you can only take it once a year. Yeah, and it's um it's a whole day. I mean, dude, I hear that they they stop air traffic. From planes from flying over, uh, yeah. so, so that so that these kids can be completely, you know, not disturbed, you know, by 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 this test. So I mean, I know it's hardcore, but I took the test or, or the five questions, and I too got three out of five. Yeah, I mean, even even like the day before, mm -hmm. like you'll see a lot of these churches have like prayer meetings before the um, the test. Like some of them are just like you know help my son performs well, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are just praying that like please <laughs> save these kids. Oh really? Because yeah. like, these some of them uh, just get so stressed out, yeah, and so strung out that they hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I was gonna say my mom is uh, she's a pastor mm -hmm. and she pay she prays for me every single day, mm -hmm. and she says that she's prayed for me every single day of my life. Mm -hmm. And has never missed a day, uh -huh. and I'm always like, "How you should have prayed harder." My, <laughs> life, my life is not that. Good. <laughs> but um, you know that that's that's pretty hardcore. Like I actually living here, mm -hmm. uh, I've seen uh, traffic on those days. Yeah, is especially like really really difficult uh, for some reason. You mean on the day of the test? Yeah, right. Like it's a, it's a it's a weird phenomenon. Uh, it's like. SATs in the in the states. I remember, you know, we we it was like Saturday mornings. Yeah, we'd have that's to right. go in. Yeah. But yeah. here, it's like a it's like an all day thing. It's an all day thing. It's uh, and it goes into the evening. Like SAT people, kids don't. I mean, kids are stressed out. They're strong because they've been preparing for it. Right. But no American kid goes into like a single test thinking like. Oh my God! Like this is it, mm. and this is gonna make or break my entire life. Yeah, because even no matter even if you're pretty competitive, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I didn't do that well. Ugh, I guess I'll just take it again next month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Um. So, is there a case where like does every uh, high school kid have to take the sunum, or can they? Just take the SATs if they want to go, if their goal is to go abroad or at least states, um, I mean, schools in the U.S., they don't need to take the sunung, right? No, that's, it's only for uh, universities in Korea. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know how, you know, when we were in high school, we were always taught to choose a safety school. 
versus like you know our dream school. So in order for you to have both the safety school and a dream school, you must have to take both tests just to cover all, all you know, all grounds, right? As a student, you mean for for high, like high school kids need to take both the sunung and the USSATs just in case to leave their options open, right? If they just go, I'm going to go all in on the on the sunung, then and they don't take the SATs and they're kind of. Ooh, screwed, right? I don't know about that anymore because I think the law changed recently mm-hmm. where, uh, let's say, some kids who uh, who grew up here, but they went to international school or mm-hmm. boarding school, mm-hmm. and they want to apply to, like, some Korean universities. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't remember exactly what the law is, but now they can't. They they have to stay here for, like, an extended period of time oh, if wow. they want to go to a Korean university, and they have to take the sunung. Wow, okay. So... I, I I do know students uh, a while back. Um, they could just take the SAT and apply to some international programs, uh, like at Yonsei. Yonsei has the Underwood School, right? And they they could do that. I don't know if they can still do that now. Hmm.